good bass. Oh, that's a fat one. Well, g'day everyone, and welcome back to another video. Now today, as you can tell, I'm pretty damn excited because we're gonna be doing one of my favorite styles of fishing, top water fishing for Australian bass. Now I've recently gained access to this private property super far out in the bush, and I've come out here today to target some bass on top water with my bait caster. Had a number of people ask me, when are you gonna go bass fishing? When are you gonna take your bait caster out? Um, well, I'm doing it today. The reason why I haven't is because of the weather. We've had lots of rain, and it's a dirt road. As you've probably seen from my other videos, I have a two-wheel drive, and it's pretty hard to get out to these remote locations in a two-wheel drive car when there's lots of potholes and mud. But it's a nice sunny day today, nice and humid, and the creek is looking great. I've actually left it a week or two for the creek to drop because this system has recently flooded. And as I'm looking at the creek behind me right here, it is looking pristine, so I'm super keen to get into things. Now, the lure of choice that I'm gonna be chucking around on surface today, actually, before I say the lure I'm gonna be chucking around on surface, if this does not get a bite, I'm obviously gonna to switch to some other lures. I've got some cranks and some um, skirted jigs in my bag. Also, some chatterbaits to throw around, but the whole idea is to try and get onto some bass on top water, because it's nice and humid. It's about 9, 9.30 in the morning, so hopefully we can get some top water strikes before it gets too late in the day. Actually, what am I saying? Bass usually hit top water all throughout the day. They're very aggressive feeders. Got that little Nutter Juck lure on a Daiwa Alphys 800 or 700 size bait cast reel with a Daiwa Rebellion 6 to 14 pound rod. And it's very short for chucking around lures in these skinny creeks. It's only six foot three. So I'm really, really excited for today, actually. So I'm gonna put this big camera away. I also forgot to say, I'm on a brand new camera. I'll show you on the GoPro real quick, but I'm on a brand new big filming camera for cinematics, close-ups, photos, you name it. All right, without further ado, let's slide down this bank, trek into the water, and start casting some lures and trying to get onto some fish. Let's go. That water's nice and cool. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing today is working my way flicking downstream, because I'm not allowed to go too far up. It's someone else's property up further. But I can go just here, where there's a nice little eddy section. Look at that. I'll flick this corner and we'll move down. Now I am pretty new to bait cast fishing. I've been Doing it a little bit. I'd have been casting around in the backyard for heaps long. I am pretty used to it, but I'm still still new. So I'm gonna check that drag. Make sure we're gonna be able to get that fish out of the cover. Also, I forgot to mention I'm on a 20 pound J braid with a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. Oh, I'm really excited actually. Look how good that swims in the water. That's bound to get eaten today. All right, well, we checked that corner. They look good. Fish aren't here. Get back up this sand dune and work our way down. This property goes for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kilometers, so. We're not going to be working all obviously all that water but we have a lot of waterway to work
little back eddy in there. That's where you want to be. It's got to be a fish in there. How is there nothing in there? That's what we're looking for though, those perfect little back eddies where the main stream runs down the side here, it's nice and shallow and it dips off into these corners where it's really deep and there's lots of snags and structure for the bass to hide. I'll hit this on the way back up with a deep diving lure or like a jig or something just to see if there is one in there and I probably spooked him because I'm going downstream. Now this is a corner that looks like it would hold some fish. Missed it. Oh. oh. He was right on it. I think he still wants it. He missed it. I knew there'd be one here. Oh, here he comes. Oh, there's two. I might step back a bit. There's two of them. Those two were so keen for it. They just kept coming back around and following it all the way to the edge. Definitely won't be back again. Okay, since they're still in that pool and they're not eating this, I know I am chucking surface around, but I'm going to quickly take that off, put on this little chatterbait. They seem very, very hungry, but they're not stupid enough to come back for another top water go. So I'll quickly chuck this on, and I reckon I'll be able to get them to bite. All right, watch this. Yep, oh, he grabbed it, he grabbed it, I can't get a hook in these fish, grabbed it again, oh, look at him, there's two of them, good bass, oh, you've got to be kidding me, you have got to be kidding me, he's just missed it again. There we go, there's a fish, there's a bass. Hey, we tempted him. There we go, first one of the day. And man, did he take some tempting. Two different baits and we finally got him. It's not a big one. Look at that on that chatterbait. Very, very nice. Just that little change up, little change up. I kept persisting, casting it in there over and over and we got one to go. That is a beautiful fish. How good is that? Chucking around that surface lure, got one boof, and they didn't come back for it, so I switched over to that chatter, and that's a nice little one. Not a giant, but it's a great sign they're out and feeding today. Let's get you back. How good was that? Now, since there was two in there, this is probably really pushing my luck. I don't want to see if the other one will take it as well. Because bass are very feisty fish. I think he probably would have gone home and told his mate, listen, don't eat that, it's not a real fish. You never know. All right, switching back up the surface. Just finished up working that pool, making my way down here. Oh, 
Oh man, does it look good just off that drop. I've got to get down though. Now my best chance of fishing any further along is going to have to be in the water. That is so refreshing. Just pray it's not too deep. No, we're good. How's the serenity out here though? Birds chirping, running water, no one else is around. This is living right here. This is what fishing is all about. There's another bass there. Another one right there. It's like the same as that last pool. Won't eat it. So I have one last cast of this and I'm gonna put on the jig again. And not the jig, the little chatterbait. Yeah, I'm gonna put on that chatterbait again. Maybe they're just not fired up on the surface today. Which can sometimes be the case, so that down there quickly put back on that chatter maybe that's what we're doing wrong I don't know the exact brand name of this but little chatterbait with a dial bait junkie mud blood UV trailer well since we've seen another bass and he didn't want the top water he need this chatterbait straight out there and I reckon he'll eat that Why are they so yeah, grabbed it. There we go. Oh, get out of the structure. That's a good bass. Oh, that's a fat one. You ripper. They just do not want that top water today, but they're climbing all over this chatterbait. That's a much better one than the first one. Very, very chunky. Nice fat girth. Beautiful fish. They just don't want that surface lure today. I chucked around the surface lure. I've been walking probably for 600, 700 meters and they just won't take anything else but this chatterbait. So I think I might stick with it for now. Beautiful stuff. I'm gonna work right along this edge. I reckon there's more in this pool than just that guy. Oh. Oh, mate, grab it. It's gone two times. 
Missed it two times. The way that you work this chatterbait, it's really quite simple. You just chuck it out and slow wind it. And that little metal plate up the front vibrates like crazy, gives off a lot of shine, a lot of flash, which draws the fish's attention. And this is fastly becoming one of my favorite lures for bass. Just been having a lot of success with it lately. Now the one thing I've got to be careful of when trekking through here is snaky snakes. I don't have a um, snake bandage kit yet, but I do have a bit of rope. So if I do get a bite, I can cut off that bit of circulation from that area. I can't believe how far this system goes down. I've come here before, but I've never been this far down. There's got to be a fish in there. But I'm not going to get my lure back if I have a cast. No chance. I'll have to go around. Well, I lied. I'm back on the surface lure already. I really want to get one off the top. I'm gonna make it my goal. I'll flick the um the subsurface lures on the way back, I reckon. Really want to tick one off off the top though. Alrighty, I've walked pretty far down, flicking the surface lure. No extra success. So what I'm gonna do, start making my way back, because I have got a trek and a half to do, like very, very far through just thick bush and non-stop log hopping. Like, look at all this. Every time this occurs, I gotta go up, over, down and around. So I'm gonna put back on that other lure we had on earlier and start making my way back. I reckon we'll get a couple more nibs though, just because of the fact that they're only really hitting that chatterbait today. The first and only hit we got off the top was the first fish. And that's that's been it for the rest of the time. On second thoughts, I'm gonna go with a little jig. Just a little football head. I'm gonna put on a little trailer, a little squid looking thing, and we'll give that a go, see if they're on a bit of a jig bite. There we go, perfectly rigged first try. That looks awesome. All right, let's start heading back. Big, big trek incoming. Looks like that might be the end of our jig. Yep, there it goes. And there goes our leader. Oh, we're gonna need to retie.
No luck there either. Been flicking all the pools where I was fishing top water as I'm making my way back. Not pulling any fish out of these either. Bit weird, especially since some of them look so good. But there's just perfect ambush points for these bass. And they're just not here. Just not here. Well, that's uh, very heartbreaking. Just pulled a bass out from under here. Most insane take. Oh, it's going crazy, going crazy. Chill, dude. Look at the size of this thing. That is a big bass, man. Oh, that's so devastating. I wasn't recording. Just flicked the chatterbait right up in here. Slow rolled and he just came out and smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. And it's gone. 39. Good fish, but so devastating I wasn't recording. He's going absolutely crazy. Very, very nice one. Man, that's a bummer. Oh well. What do you do? Yeah, you're keen as. That's a head scratch moment right there. It's just right up in there. Tucked away right in that, in that gap. good like I don't get it they're just not sitting in these little pools and eddy areas that looks good up there though tapped it a couple of times. That's a really little bass. Oh, he had it. He still wants it. No way. He goes this again. Oh my, he hit it again. Still there. Super little. He's done me. He's still on me though. Oh, got him off. Wow. I just made so much noise crossing all under and over these branches. Flicked right up in there and he still ate. You must be very, very hungry fella. Very hungry. It's only a little guy. But oh, man, it's been a good couple of hours, that's for sure. Been a very good couple of hours with no fish. There we go, nice little bass. Gotta be really careful with these guys as well because they have a massive anal spike. Actually just got my finger before. Just a little tacker. That's so cool though. Can't believe he ate that after me making all that noise. See you mate. Thanks for playing. Oh. Well, back at the car now, and uh, I think it's pretty fair to say I'm absolutely exhausted. We had a very, very long day out. I think if you can remember from the intro, I said we got out here at 9 till 
And if I check the time right now, it is 5.49, about to go 5.50. 9.30 to basically 6 o'clock. That is an absolute full-on day out and I'm very tired. I had an awesome day out chasing Australian bass in Skinny Water Creeks and I think we got onto three or four. No, it was four. We did get onto four. I remember because I didn't have one on record, which I'm still pretty upset about. Very epic fight. I chucked it right up into the snag, burned it out. He smashed it. Big fish trying to go back in the snags. I had to thumb the spool. Oh well. It's a bit unfortunate, but that's YouTube fishing. You're constantly clicking the button off and on and you just never know when you're not going to capture something on record. And it was that moment right there, unfortunately. With all that being said, it is getting pretty late and I'm getting very hungry. Need a bit of food in my belly, so thank you everyone for watching till the end of the video. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff you usually do on the videos. Appreciate all your support and I'll see you in the next one.